By 1993, no one disputed Florida State's place among college football's elite. Still, there was one thing missing from the Seminoles' resume, a national championship. That was soon to change. That Seminole team made it clear early on that they were something special. An incredible 12-play goal line stand against Kansas in the season opening kickoff classic showed the nation that Florida State had the grit and guts to carry its number one preseason ranking till the end. I think we went out there against Kansas and showed that, you know, we want to carry the team and, you know, defense, we're going to win the championship, you know, at this university. And I think that goal line stand really kind of set our foundation for, for something to build on throughout the year. The accomplishments of 1993 were numerous. Heisman Trophy winner Charlie Ward was one of four All-Americans and 17 All-ACC selections on the squad. FSU rolled over its conference competition by an average of 42.5 points and collected four shutouts on the year. FSU claimed the state championship which some feel is tougher to win than a national title by beating Miami and Florida. Most telling, the Seminoles led the nation in both scoring offense and scoring defense. There would be one bump along the road to a title, however. In a classic confrontation, the top-ranked Seminoles traveled to South Bend, Indiana, to take on the second-ranked Notre Dame Fighting Irish. A matchup rightly billed as the game of the century, and it would all come down to one final play. For once, Charlie Ward could not work his magic, and the Irish prevailed 31-24. A week later, however, fortune smiled on FSU as Notre Dame lost 41-39 to Boston College. Rejuvenated by the news of Notre Dame's demise, the Seminoles crushed North Carolina State 62-3 to reclaim the top spot in the Associated Press Bowl. But there was one team that stood between Florida State and a New Year's date with destiny. The Florida Gators. The Seminoles dominated their rivals for three quarters, yet they led by only 26-21 with 5.58 remaining. Facing a critical third down from the FSU 21-yard line, Ward softly lobbed a pass through the Florida field uproar and found freshman Warwick Dunn on the other end. 79 yards later, Dunn was in the end zone, and the Knolls were on their way to Miami's Orange Bowl. Right here, look that way, Marcus. That's the thing we've worked for right down the map. You know, I mean, you don't want to hold nothing back. You know, you ain't going to hold nothing back, man. Most observers, frankly, expected Florida State to beat Nebraska handily despite the Cornhuskers' undefeated record and number two AP ranking. But a proud Nebraska squad came ready to fight. Luckily, so did the Seminoles. Nebraska took a 7-6 halftime lead, but a William Floyd touchdown plunge gave FSU a 12-7 edge, which Scott Bentley stretched to 15-7 with a 39-yard field goal. Nebraska stormed back, though, taking a 16-15 lead with just 1-16 remaining. Undaunted, as always, Ward led the Seminoles down the field, quickly gaining the Cornhusker five-yard line. From there, Bentley drove a 22-yard field goal straight through the uprights for an 18-16 Seminole advantage. The Tribe had still to withstand a 45-yard field goal try by Nebraska's Byron Bennett on the game's final play. The kick sailed left, and Bobby Bowden and Florida State had their first national title, a mere 47 years 
after the program's inception. I'm very happy and excited that I was a part of the first national championship team for the mere fact that they've had so many great teams and uh, it's just a matter of uh, being on the right team at the right time. It was a great year. It was a great ball club. And uh, yet, I, th I think we had some ball clubs just about as good that didn't win it, but only lost it by one point. But uh, this team deserved to win it, and they, and they, and they did.